Hi, ladies. I hope you have been able to get outside and enjoy this beautiful weather we're having. Um, a couple things before I start talking about the content of the week. This uh, next week, this week you have a quiz due by Friday at 11.55 a.m. Next week you have an outline due for a paper. And so I want to talk about that paper for a minute. The paper is a three to six page paper. It's a research paper. And in it you're going to be making a case for someone to be the most important person or event in church history. You can't talk about Jesus. I mean, you can talk about Jesus, but Jesus can't be your topic. Um, and like every paper that you write, it should have an intro, a body, and a conclusion. So next week, you're going to turn in an outline of this. And some general rules about outlines. If there's a capital A, there has to be a capital B. If there's a 1, there has to be a 2. Um, so try to outline in as much detail as you can what you're going to say in your paper which obviously means you need to pick a topic. I know we haven't talked about too many people and events yet, um, although what we have talked about, what you've read about, should give you some good ideas to begin with. But you could also go through the table of contents or the index at the back to get some more ideas. And again, it could be an event or a person, and you're making a case for them being the most important person or event in church history. Um, Again, the outline is due next week. You'll look if you look at the schedule. There's a day where you're going to turn in a works cited page and eventually the research paper. And the paper itself again isn't super long, three to six pages typed. Um, but when you do the outline, please include an intro, a body, and a conclusion. And let me know if you have any questions about topics or the paper itself. Uh, this week is an interesting week because a lot of things happen that help Christianity and we're really favorable toward Christianity. As you know from last week in the reading that you've been doing, Christians were persecuted for 300 or so years and in those persecutions they weren't really able to openly worship Jesus or share their faith in an open way. And the big thing that happened was Constantine came along. And Constantine, we believe, was kind of um, a smart leader, um, maybe not so faithful, but he had the kind of belief that if you can't beat him, join him. So by the time he became the emperor of the western part of the Roman Empire, there were so many Christians that there was just no way to stop Christianity. And so he and another emperor, who was the emperor in the eastern part of the Roman Empire, Together, they wrote what's called the Edict of Milan. And the Edict of Milan basically said that it was legal for Christians to practice their religion publicly. Prior to the Edict of Milan, there was the Edict of Toleration, which basically said they could practice their religion privately um, and they could pray. They had to include prayers for the emperor, who was very sick at the time. But the Edict of Milan was a really huge deal because it really brought Christianity out from the in out from hiding basically into the public and it allowed them to really spread their religion. And of course the fact that they weren't being persecuted was awesome too. But um, it started an era of what we call Caesar Papism, where the emperor became kind of the head of the church and there wasn't the separation of church and state that we're used to. And this meant that the emperor kind of controlled much of what happened in the church. And so there were really good things about Constantine and some things that weren't as good. Another thing, once he made Christianity the official religion, there were some perks to people tax-wise and otherwise uh, for being Christian. And so where Christianity originally was a religion of very devout people willing to die for their faith, it became more of a lax religion where people you know, wanted to say they were Christian because of the perks that they would receive. Also, in the chaos of all of the fighting that was happening with barbarian tribes trying to get in and Constantine taking over, eventually Constantine overthrew the emperor in the east and took over the whole Roman Empire too. And so in a reaction to that, one thing that we, we see happen in this era was the rise of monasticism. So first there was Anthony of Egypt who was a hermit living out in the woods, but prayer was part of his daily life. People admired the way he was living, and so they kind of 
watched how he lived, watched his routine, and lived around him sort of in a circle and try to mimic his lifestyle. And eventually that became, you know, people in communities trying to live a very religious life with a lot of prayer and study. And all of that, again, is very good, um, was a great thing. But at the same time, I think what Jesus told us as far as our call as disciples includes helping our neighbor. And how do you do that when you don't see your neighbor, when you don't interact with your neighbor? And that was kind of the problem with monasticism in its early years. They retreated into the desert, into these monasteries, and never really had to see face to face the problems of society or the people who really needed God. Um, and there are a few other uh, heretical groups. We talked about heresy last week. Heresy is basically a lie against the church. And there's a couple other groups. Another really important person of this era is St. Augustine. And you'll read all about St. Augustine. But, I mean, of all the people in the church, he really influenced a lot of teaching in the church and a lot of the way people saw church. And Augustine is such a great example, too, because his early life was very sinful. He really rejected Christianity when he did convert. He turned everything around, and it really does speak to us of this great example that we too can turn our lives around to God as well. And I'll just end with something that St. Augustine said, which I think is so beautiful. In his writings, he said that his heart was restless until it rested in God. And so hopefully this week you can rest in God a little bit, and good luck with your reading and the quiz this week and the homework this week. It's a discussion this week. Okay, talk to you next week.